Hey, welcome to EMS Office Hours. Uh, this is your Monday Minutes. I am Jim Hoffman. And today, guys, we are going to wrap up the diabetic emergency section and talk about HHNC, or hyperglycemic hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma. That's a mouthful. Before we get to that, guys, I want to, of course, remind you why this stuff is important. Yes, it's great for exams. Gives you the key information to help you pass exams, right? Keep you on track. But it's also to help build your knowledge base. Move that knowledge needle just a little bit, okay? Or to refresh your, refresh your information you might have already studied on and bring the knowledge needle back up, right? From where you might have lost a little bit. Listen, I've been doing this for a long time and I always have to keep refreshing my memory on certain things, especially stuff you don't see a lot out there in the field, right? A lot of the nuances of this stuff and bring my knowledge needle back up to where it belongs, right? Just like a car gauge or your gas gauge in your car, right? The fuel starts to go empty, you got to bring it back up. Same type of thing. And guys, this also helps you make better clinical decisions as well and write better reports and interact more effectively with your healthcare professional cohort, whether it be your partner, doctors, nurses, whatever the case may be. So today, guy, is a quick one today. We're going to talk about the HHNC. One thing I will say that the coma part, right, now is really called syndrome. And the reason why is that the percentage of people that actually go into a coma from this is much lower than what was initially thought and research had shown. So now, you might see it as HHNS, okay? You might see other descriptions of it as well, okay? I'm going by a couple of different EMS textbooks, um, and they either say HHNC or HHNS, okay? So what it is is pretty much what we talked about last time, right? Really, really high levels of glucose that the patients have, okay? Um, it's relative insulin deficiency, you get that hyperosmola going on in the extracellular fluid, dehydration, a lost uh, uh, you know, level of consciousness becomes much, much more de de decreased, okay? Um, but you're not going to have any ketones, all right? So a lot of times with this guy, you're going to see this in patients that are over 60, right? Elderly patients, okay? Um, a lot of times you might see it precipitated by an infection, maybe by extreme cold or even dehydration, like I mentioned as well, right? Um, a lot, Most of the time, this is gradual. It happens over three, four, five days. And like I said, you're not going to have those Kuzmal respirations. You're not going to have that fruity odor, odor on the breath because you're not getting those ketones. There's no acidosis going on here, okay? So, Guys, that's pretty much it with this, right? Very simple, guy. but this is the type of thing because this is a, a, a true emergency, okay? Um, and there's not much we can do in the field. We can give fluid, right? But what we have to do for in the field is pretty much what we did with the DKA patients, right? We're monitoring the airway. We're giving oxygen. We're watching for shock. We're monitoring the, the EKG, Right, we're starting an IV. We're giving them a fluid bolus, giving them starting those normal saline, getting the fluid in there, okay? Because that dehydration got to be rectified, right? Not giving them anything by mouth, and we're going to transport and support their ABCs or CBAs, whatever you want to say, right? So it's not like there's a lot we're going to do in the field, but the key is to identify it. One thing I do want to mention that there is a uh, maybe 20% of people that might get into HHNC or NS where they have no history of diabetes. That's what we talk about elderly patients, right? It's triggered by uh, something like, a, like the sepsis or triggered by something like dehydration, okay? So just because they don't have diabetes doesn't mean that this can't be going on. So you want to go ahead and check that blood glucose and think of everything that's going on with that patient, right? The, the entire assessment, okay? Um, now, talking about diabetes, guys, just a quick, quick, quick overview here. 
for all your diabetic patients, okay, just kind of want to round this up, man. I'd always ask them what they ate that day to get an idea. Did they eat too much, eat too little, okay? Did they take their insulin, okay? Did they take less or more than usual? It, was there any dosage change in their insulin, a dosage change in any other medications? And look for stress or other changes that might have caused them to either have a high or low blood glucose level or change in their mental status, okay? Things like alcohol, other medications, stress, again, like I, like I just mentioned, trauma, all type of stuff like that. Look for this type of stuff, guys. Do your assessment so you can kind of weed down and maybe figure out what might be causing that diabetic emergency, whether it's high glucose or, or hyper, you know, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, DKA, whatever the case may be. Okay, these are questions you should always be asking your diabetic patients. And, you know, and, and by asking these questions, even for patients that are non-diabetic, it might lead you to believe that there might be some sort of diabetic issue going on. Okay, um, care is like I said, like I just showed you, and just some quick signs and symptoms to kind of round it out, guys. Look for the ultimate mental status. Look for those Kuzma respirations, hypotension, their skin temp. Are they are they really really hot? Are they are they diaphoretic? Are they pale? Okay, are they cool? Right. What's their hydration status? Um, is their blood glucose high? Really really high? With the machine is not even telling you a reading. It just reads high, or is it low or really really low? Where it just says low. Right. Uh, tachycardia. All right, just some quick physical assessments and things that you can look for when you're assessing patients you might suspect having some sort of diabetic issue going on, okay? Uh, again, guys, this isn't everything. This is a quick Monday Minutes here. I'm trying to get in the high points here, and hopefully this encourages you to seek out more information. If anything here does not ring true or does not make any sense to you, open up that textbook, do some online research, okay? And refresh your memory so that you can, again, move your knowledge needle a little bit or refill it if need be, right? Guys, that is going to be it for me. I hope you engage with me on social media, guys. Get me on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm at EMS Safe for both of those. And you can get me on Facebook, and it's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional, okay? Um, you can actually get me on either... On, on Instagram or Twitter, if you put emsseo.com forward slash Instagram or forward slash Twitter, I have directed those links to go directly to those pages so you can make it easier for you to go ahead and, and uh, join me and I have to search for my, for my name, okay? Um, and guys, listen, if, like I mentioned, about moving your knowledge needle and about uh, maybe researching this stuff, if you're not sure what's going on, it doesn't ring true, TurboMedic is the exclusive members-only website, okay? Guys, I'm not beating you over the head with membership fees with this. I'm not boring you with hour-long presentations with this, okay? Reteaching you what you already know as an EMS professional, okay? This is designed for you to master content, to be a great clinician, to make you more comfortable when you're taking exams and when you're operating out in the field, okay? Um, yes, there are long presentations inside TurboMedic as well as very, very short ones. There are very long uh, digital guides as well as very, very short digital guides, okay? Um, there's long audio recordings and short audio recordings, okay? It depends upon what you need, and this is why I call it TurboMedic On Demand, now, if you're interested in something like this and you think this might help you with your knowledge building, something that you think might help you when it comes to researching things or things you're just struggling with on, on a call or in EMS, I've got a trial membership for you. You can get access to the gigabytes of the digital content, hours of audio and video, the practice exams, and exclusive access to me and the Facebook group for TurboMedic. All during the trial membership, there's nothing that is restricted. You can check it out. Just go to emsseo.com forward slash turbo, and you can sign up for a trial membership there. All right, guys, that is it. 
I hope you found this useful. If you have some ideas, some suggestions for some minutes of your own, send them over to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com or you can comment here in the notes. You can DM me on Twitter or Instagram or even message me on Facebook as well. I always get back to people that message me. I love the engagement. That's what keeps me going on these videos and content I put out there. Guys, check out EMS Office Hours as well for other Monday Minutes, for other content, including the podcast there. All right, guys, that is it. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.